We need our spirit-filled preachers To teach us right from wrong Hebrews 12, 1. If you have your Bible, go there, please. Thank you guys for coming. I know the Super Bowl's on. Thank you for being here. Jeff, thank you for coming. You don't know me very well, but I watched you preach a few times up here, and I'm glad to see you. I want to hear you preach again. Me too. Hey, Will. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, country. I like to hear you. Yeah, I'm from the north. You're a little different. Well, I still like to hear you. Hebrews 12, say amen if you're there. Amen. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, hallelujah, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the yeah. throne of God. Raise your hands and lift them this way, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, I ask you to touch my lips, touch my tongue, and touch this message, Lord. Give me the give me the courage to preach it the way you want it preached, not the way Shane tries to preach it. Satan, I rebuke you out of here. Any messenger of Satan's in here, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that the light of Jesus penetrate any heart and heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I did not want to preach this. I started wrestling with God around Monday. I did not want to preach this. Okay, it's not a hard message. Y'all started looking nervous. It's not, a, it's not a hard message, okay? It's not a hard message. It's a, Come on, bro. But on a serious note, it is a, a very serious message. They all should be. But this one's a very serious message. God's going to have me touch on some things that may make you uncomfortable. Okay? If they do make you uncomfortable, please sit there. Please, okay? This sermon, when God gave it to me, it helped me. And I was just going to keep it for myself. But Come on. It helped me, and I guarantee you it'll help you, okay? Yes, Tonight I'm going to be a little different. I know you guys used to be yelling at you and all that stuff, but that's not the direction God wants me to go right now. Right now he wants me to uh, talk to you, okay? And I can't teach like Brother Freddie, but I'm going to talk to you, okay? And I'm going to talk to you about something God showed me. He showed me three emotions, not sins, not sins, three emotions that the church is being affected by. Come on. Okay? Come on, bro. And I know this to be true. It Come came on. from the lips of God Hallelujah. to me and now to you. Hallelujah. Okay, this is very true. There's three emotions that are muzzling us, that are stifling our testimonies. On, There's three emotions that the church is going through, the people, body, you know, the body of Christ, people, not just this church, all churches, you know, the Christians, I'm talking about the body of Christ, okay, there's three emotions, one of the three, or all of the three, there's people suffering with, they're suffering with them, and they're coming in, and, and, and they're not confronting these emotions, I never was, they're not confronting these emotions, and they're leaving, and it's really hurting them, but these are three uncomfortable emotions. That's why I didn't want to preach it. Come on. Everybody wants to be a preacher until it's time to actually do some preaching. Yeah, come on. <laughs> they love the title of minister and evangelist and all these things, but they don't want to put the work in. They don't want to be woke up at 2 a.m. with a message from God that you know you have to preach even though you don't want to. And I'm not boasting about myself or anything. Like I said, I was failing in this. I got chastised for it. I was failing in this. I was wrestling with God. I don't want to preach this. God, they're not going to receive it. But I promise you, look, if you see Shane up here, I'm doing something wrong, okay? This is not my message. The first thing I'm going to talk about tonight is rejection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't know I suffered from the spirit of rejection. I do. I did. I'm sorry. I did. Okay? And a lot of you guys sitting here, as much as you hate to admit it, you do also. When I was in the jail preaching, God was showing me. Rejection. Okay? Not rejects. Rejection. Spirits of rejection all over these people that make them feel less than. A little less than. Now, rejection can happen in many, many ways. Some people are born into rejection. They live their life wondering. Their mother or their father took off, and they, they live their life wondering, why, why is this? Why did this happen? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with me? Especially if 
the father or mother goes on and has another child and stays in that child's life. I've seen that destroy people. Yeah. Come on, brother. I went through rejection at an early age. And I know I'm a tough guy, but I'm going to be humble up here and tell you. With my father, nothing was ever good enough. Don't do that to your kids, man. Listen to me. Nothing was ever good enough. I couldn't work on cars good enough. Okay? I couldn't fight good enough for him. I couldn't build things good enough for him. And what he did was he put a, a, a rejection on me to where I felt like nothing will ever be good enough. Nothing will ever be good enough. Actually, when I got the call to preach, and God showed me this this week, when I got the call to preach, the first thing out of my mouth wasn't that I was nervous to be up here or anything. It was, they won't receive me. I'm not going to be good enough. Come on, bro. Come on. That's what happened. That rejection was still there. It wasn't being dealt with. The rejection was still there. I do marriage counseling for about five couples and and, and there's a few of them who were, their marriage was infected with adultery. Now I'm going to talk about some very adult things here. We're all adults. But when, it, when adultery infects a marriage, rejection infects with it. Even if the person goes on and gets a divorce, they still, they live their life wondering, why was I not good enough for this person? And it ain't always men that commit adultery. Women do it also. And the victim is stuck wondering, whoa, do they look better than me? Were they funnier than me? Why? Why did this happen? Even if they forgive the person, they still get stuck with rejection. This affects us. This makes us feel less than. My God. John 1, 11. He came unto his own and they received him not. Listen to me. He was rejected for you. A lot happened at Calvary. A lot happened. A whole lot happened at Calvary. I, everybody wants to talk about the sins being forgiven. Hey, I'm going to get to that. But so much more happened. So much marvelous. It's beautiful. We serve an awesome God. He truly defeated the devil. Hear me tonight. He was rejected. He was rejected by his own people. He said, when the world hates you, remember it hated me first. It hated me first. You have no reason to feel less than. Don't allow the devil to get in your mind. No matter what happened to you, rebuke the devil out of your mind. You are a child of the living God. You are a child of the living God. You are the righteousness of God. You are more than conquerors. Accept who you are. Get rid of the rejection. There's no shame in it. There's no shame. Like I said, I'm a grown man. I suffered from this. I truly suffered from this. But the moment that I got the reality wrapped in my brain that Jesus was rejected so I, I don't have to feel this way, I was able to conquer it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't think I was going to be yelling at you. Holy Ghost had a... It's all right, Come on. Hallelujah. A lot happened at Calvary. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. A lot happened at Calvary. See, we get we get in such a routine. Oh, Jesus died for your sins. So much more happened at Calvary. So much more. In fact, I'm going to get into a part of this sermon that is going to be very uncomfortable, not just for those of you who may have went through this, but for me up here preaching it, this is very uncomfortable to get into. Hallelujah. But it needs to be said, God told me to. I look at the crucifixion pictures of it. I look at all these things. And I understand an artist is trying to capture the moment, but church, you can't capture the moment. It was so much more horrible. Amen. than any picture right. can depict. Right, I listened to a medical examiner who went through detail of what would have happened at the crucifixion. Not just crucifixion, but at, at the whipping and all that. Yeah. What went through, he said you would, hallelujah, he, you would be able to see a piece of flesh on our Savior's body and be covered with blood. That's how brutal. He named off about thousands and thousands of stitches it would have took to stitch him up. But one of the things, the reason I'm now, I'm not going to get into that, okay? But one of the things that really God has showed me through this week, please listen to me on this, please. The pictures are not accurate. He was naked. That's right. He was naked. Hallelujah. It says they casted lots for his garments. He was stripped naked. 
when they would whip people, they would strip them naked to whip them from the top of their head all the way down their back. He was naked. And I understand why artists don't depict this in drawings and things, practical reasons. But listen to me. He was naked on that cross. He was shamed. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about shame right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about shame. He was shamed. I want you to visualize this with me. Visualize this with me. In front of his mother, in front of everybody, all of his disciples, he was humiliated and stripped naked. Stripped naked and hung up on the cross naked for everybody to see. I know lots of people, lots of grown adults who were molested as children who feel shame for this. Come on. See, shame's different than guilt. Guilt is when you do something to somebody, you feel bad for it. Shame is when somebody does something to you and you're stuck with it. You're stuck with it. I know a lot of grown adults who are, who are church-going people who were raped or molested. And, and they, they keep it a secret. They don't want to come out. They, they feel shamed. They feel shame. They don't want to. They don't want to admit it. They never thought that they would be in that category of people. They never thought. They thought nobody would believe them if they say anything. Everybody's going to say I'm lying. And a lot of people do that to, to a woman who's been raped. And I'm not just talking about women. There's men who have been raped. There's men who have been molested. Hear me, church. And it's, it could almost even be harder for them because they feel shame. I feel like a punk. I feel like I'm not tough now. I, they might think I'm gay. How could I ever admit this? I go to the jails. I go and listen to these people that's been to prison and you can see it. Torment them. Yeah. Torment them. And they can never listen to me. He was naked on the cross. You have no reason to feel shame. He had you in his mind as he hung up there naked. He bore the shame for you. Don't feel shame. You, he has, he has given you. You have no reason to feel shame. Satan is trying to shame you so you won't speak. Your testimony could reach many people. It could help many people who went through the same thing. But you feel shame and you won't speak it. You won't speak it to them. He bore the shame. He bore the rejection. So much more happened at Calvary. So much more. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing. Hallelujah. You are children of God. Children of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. He bore the shame. Listen to this. Listen to this. In Hebrews 12, listen, please focus on this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Despising the shame. He was shamed for you. He bore the shame for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to carry that weight. You don't have to carry that weight. He took it for you. Just give it to him. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Thank I'm going to get to kill. Maybe you committed adultery. You're the one that committed it. And it didn't seem like a big deal to you at the time. But then later on, as you notice, lives were ruined by it. Lives were ruined by it. You start seeing the seriousness of what you've done. Come on. Yeah. I have I have done so much, okay? I have hurt so many people. Can I get a water, please? I'm up here yelling at everybody. <laughs> I have hurt so many people. And when I first got saved, I think I even preached up here once. And I said, the memories don't go away. They don't go away. But they do. Listen to me. Listen to me. That's called guilt. Hallelujah. Guilt. It's so easy, especially preaching, it's so easy. So easy to tell other people, well, you've been forgiven of your sins, but then we don't really believe it. We might believe other people's been forgiven for their sins, but we don't believe we have. Come on, come on. We don't believe we have. And as I was going through this week, I was, uh, the devil likes to attack me through dreams, okay? And they're not nightmares, they're just memories. Memories of people that I've hurt, okay? Yeah. He does the same thing to you guys, don't lie. Listen. He likes to attack me through reminding me of my past, about everything. Now listen, if I feel guilt about something I've done, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard for me to speak about that to people. 
It's going to be hard for me to open up about that because I still feel guilty for doing it. Do you see his tactic? Do you see his tactic? Okay? Look, he, all week I was like, and then God woke me up about 3.15 in the morning. Not the devil. God woke me up. And all I could think of was the crucifixion. All I could think of was my Savior naked on the cross, beaten from head to toe. All I could think about was the blood pouring off of him. That's all I could think about. And I started thinking, he started putting it on me. I didn't do this for nothing. Come on. Come on. If you are allowing the devil to fill you with guilt, it was all done in vain. That's right. It was all done in vain. Yeah. He took your yeah. sins yeah. when yeah. you asked him into your heart. Yeah. You were forgiven of everything. Come on. Of everything. Let yeah. the guilt go. Let it go. That you're being weighed down by this. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't care what you've done. And I don't care what any preacher wants to say about this. I don't care what you've done in this life. If you truly repent and you give your heart to God, you are forgiven of your sins. You are forgiven of your sins. Now listen, Freddie, Brother Freddie, I'm going to ask you to come here real quick. Just Freddie. I want you to jump up here on this piano real fast, okay? Play a little tune. I'm going to close, but before I do, okay, I was asked, hallelujah, I was asked by my wife if she could say something, okay? Now I'm going to turn it over and let her say something here. I want you guys to listen to this, okay? I want you to listen to this. So much more happened at the crucifixion. So much more. Come on, Tiffany. Uh, when I was nine years old, I was molested by a man that... Uh, I was molested by a man that I loved, that I trusted, that I put everything into. This man was my stepfather. Okay, and... This man literally meant more to me than my real dad did. He was there all the time. No matter what, he was there. And so when he did this, it just it tore me up because I became ashamed of myself. I did. Um, I know it sounds it might sound crazy, but I was I was ashamed that I had to be like Shane said I had to be categorized in that category, like this happened. Oh, come on. Um I was ashamed that Nobody would believe me. I was ashamed that, like, why, why did it have to happen to me? Out of everybody else, why me? Um, would anybody, like, would anybody that I was close to actually believe me? And um, I would, um, I became ashamed of myself, like, deeply ashamed of myself because I thought I caused it. Knowing now, I was nine years old, and I know I didn't cause it, but. Still, um, well, the other night, God woke me up and told me I had to tell you guys this because out of all them years, for 26 years, I'm not telling you guys this for pity, for anything like that. Um, I'm telling you guys this because I have never spoke out about this, and I gave myself pity for 26 years about this. I, I always ran through my mind of, like, why? Why? So, um... Uh, um, so, <clears throat> it's time for me to open my mouth, and it's time for me to help other women. This only happened to me one time because now I know God gave me my skin coat, which is my dad. But still, I know I still know how it feels to go through this. I still know how it feels to have this all this weight put on you. <clears throat> and um, when you start. When you start feeling like this, um, it, it's hard. It's a hard thing to feel like because like you don't, you really, truly don't understand what to do, how to do it. And coming with this, with the shame, I didn't only feel shame, I felt rejection. Because I told, I hate to say this, but I told my mom. I didn't tell her until I was 18. And she rejected me. She told me it was a lie. 
I was lying. <coughs> she told me that I was making up stories just to get attention, and I wasn't. So, I felt rejection from that. Um, and then that led to guilt. I did things in my life that I was guilty of. I'm not saying that caused it, that did not help. It didn't help to have all that weight on me. Come on. Um, so, and like if you feel tonight, if you feel guilty or you feel ashamed or you feel rejection, it doesn't have to be from the last thing. She could be from anything. I did things when I was on drugs and stuff that I feel I, I feel guilty of. I've had things done to me that I feel ashamed of, like from shame of, um, not just this, but other things. And, um, when Shane got this message Monday morning, it hit me so hard. Like, it was late. It was late night. It was like 11 o'clock. And I got up out of bed and just bawled my eyes out because my God, my God took all this for me. My God did all this so I didn't have to feel this. No. Um, and he, like, he, I don't know. Come on. To me, it was, it blew my mind, honestly. It did. It blew my mind because he didn't only take my guilt or my sins. He didn't only hang on that cross to take my sins away. He took literally everything yes. for yes. us. Yes. He did everything that we were. He knew what we were going to face, the times, the troubles, and everything that we were going to face, and he took it all so that Hallelujah. when we gave our heart back to him, when we gave our life back to him, that we didn't have to carry none of these burdens around anymore. We didn't have to. Hallelujah. We could cast our cares on him and know that they were gone. Okay, I got a verse. It is. Um, Psalms 107 6 and it says then they cried out to the Lord in their time of trouble and he believed or he delivered them from their distress okay you know what distress means distress means extreme anxiety sorrow and pain okay he will take that distress away he will Come take on. that anxiety he will take that sorrow and he will take that pain away yeah. if, you, if you just have to hand it over you just yeah. have to say Lord take this I don't want it no more he will do that for yeah. you Come on. To give it to him. Don't pick it back up. Leave it there. A woman of God told me a while ago to write down everything I, I that I comes to my mind. I have had a couple of the. I got up here a couple of times to say something. I never wrote them down. This one I wrote down. I wrote down because when I try to pick that burden back up, when I try to take that care back home with me, Come I can on. read this and know that He already has this. Not to take it back. I, it's not mine no more. I have to let it go. And being able to stand up here and do this, being able to stand up here and face all of you um, and tell you what had happened to me has given me so much more boldness to be able to go out and share this part of my testimony. Uh, when I first got saved, I would have I would have never stepped up here and told none of you guys that because it was it was a part of me that I didn't want nobody to know. Nobody. Um, I barely told my husband that happened, but he's my husband. I've been with him for 10 years. I had to tell him some, eventually. So just, if you guys have shame and you guys have, or have been rejected, or you guys have guilt, just listen to him. Just take it in. It might take you a few days. Like tonight, you might not, it might not click all the way, but just eat on it. Chew on this. Think about it because... He has taken it all for you. As soon as I heard that, the, literally the world was lifted off of me. Because I didn't have to, I didn't have to think about that no more. When I think about that now, about what happened to me when I, was, when I was nine years old, I think about, I look at it as the devil, what is that you say? He, he takes evil for, or turns evil into good, okay? And he turned this into something that I can go out to other women. Not even, not only other women. I'm not a man, obviously, but I can say I've been there. I've done this. I know how it feels. I know how what you're going through. I know what you're thinking. But God, but our God, yeah. our Lord and our Savior has yeah. taken this. Yeah. Just let it go. I know it's hard. I know it's a struggle. Every day I have struggled with this. Even now, I've struggled with it every once in a while, but I remember I keep all I can think of is he was naked on that yeah. cross for me. He was naked to take my shame away. Hallelujah. To take this pain that is in my heart Hallelujah. away. So, that's all I got. That's yeah. all I got. Hallelujah. The real issues that affect the church. That's why God told me to preach it. And I know it's a little different.
It's a little different. But we're conquering something tonight. I'm telling you, we're conquering something tonight. He's under our feet where he belongs. No longer is your past going to trouble you. No longer is your past going to stop you from speaking what God's done for you. I tell you tonight, everybody in here, raise your hands and close your eyes, please. Close your eyes and picture Christ on that cross. Bearing all the shame, all the humiliation, bearing all of it, your guilt, your sins. It was my sins that caused the crucifixion. It was our sins that caused it. Picture Him on the cross. He had you in mind when this happened. Now I ask you to come to the front. Whatever it is in your past that's been troubling you, come lay it down on this altar. And what you do, don't ever pick it back up. You guys have what God put on my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're all on a journey. We're called to walk by faith. There will always be mountains and valleys in our way, but right here in this moment, may our strength be renewed, as we recall what God has done, now we've seen Him move.
did see this movie. I, I just heard it. I heard it was a, it's called Facing the Giants. You see, and what Tiffany had been facing all these years is a giant. Uh, you know, there was a giant that came. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and he would shake his sword at them. And they would run. But there was a little shepherd boy. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not going to run. Hallelujah. I tell you, what happened tonight is Tiffany has took that sword that the giant had and cut the head off. Brought it out into the open. Hallelujah. The devil has nothing on her. Didn't have it anyway. But I tell you, see, she might have been holding that inside. You might be holding things on the inside. It's a giant. Hallelujah. Now take this word, which is the sword. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Take this word and cut the head off. Yes. Hallelujah. I tell you what, if it ain't got no head, it ain't got it can't control you no more. Amen. Hallelujah.